This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. Um, yeah, obviously, you know, uh, extremely tough loss. Um, uh, first, I want to give credit to, to, to Boston College and their, their coaching staff. They, they, they obviously uh, you know, had their guys prepared and, and, and coached a good game, played a good game. And, um, you know, we made far too many mistakes to win a game. I, I really feel like I mean, we, we shot ourselves in the foot way too many times in that game. Um, you know, with penalties and then turnovers, it's just hard. You can't you can't win a game when, when you do that that many times. Obviously, in, in some some critical moments with the turnovers as well. And so, um, I, I, the positive coming out is, is you, you, you look at you, you saw a bunch of guys in that locker room to really care about each other and, and played and fought till the end. Or there was plenty of times in that game they could have just tanked it and. And, and, and moved on, and, and you didn't see that. So I, I know this. We, we, have, we have the right character and substance on our team. Um, you know, we, we got to continue to get better, develop the guys we have, and keep keep you know bringing in players through recruiting into our program. But you know, you, you saw the the, the buy in, and, and as much as those guys care about one another and, and how they played, we were in it right till the end. Uh, to our seniors, it's just um, it, it's a hard way to go out, hard way to finish on a loss. Those guys, I, I've probably said it before, and. and Say it again. It just for, for those guys to buy in the way they bought in this year, and, and we've demanded a lot of them. It, it's it's been a hard program for 12 months. It's been a hard program to stay in, be a part of. Um, and, and you've seen that there, there's been guys that have trickled out along the way, and um, we made it hard for a reason. And so the, so there'd be a, a big investment. It'd be hard hard to be be in that room, be in that locker room. And so the guys that are in there, it, there'll be tremendous successes in their life because. They, they've now learned that they, they've gone through it, and so our seniors have bought in with blind trust and and did a great job. It wasn't all pretty, obviously, but we, we got to continue to get better and grow. And, and I, I think you can you know definitely see the program's heading in the right direction. We just we got to learn how to you know not beat ourselves before we can go beat someone else. Any questions? Tom? Questions. TJ, how critical was not being able to punch them at that and settle for the field goal with all the time that elapsed at that point in the game? Yeah, I mean, it's critical. I, mean, I don't know. You, know, you need to get the ball in the end zone. The ball's on the half yard line. You got to get the ball in the end zone. Let, let alone turn it over. Um, you know, it, the, the couple plays before that, we're on, we're on the two yard line in a, in a 22 man mosh pit and had a holding penalty called on us. You know, that, that, that got pushed back. And then, you know, I don't know, just just one thing after another. But but for us, two center exchanges on, on the on the fourth and one out on the field. If we don't fumble that snap, it's probably a touchdown. To the flip play to Kenny, there, there was there was absolutely no one there. He still almost got it after the whole fumble and all, all that. So, you know, but but it's just it is what it is. That's us executing. That's that's us executing the center quarterback exchange, which has been going on you know since this game began. And just just to follow up, how how surprised in terms of Perry's normally very short-handed, and, and he just seemed to not be able to. Hold on to the ball. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I have to look at the film and see who. I don't know whose fault if the ball was getting up or not. If it was Perry, I, I don't know. It's hard to see that stuff full speed on the field. But yeah, at the end of the day, we, we, I mean, that can't happen. DJ, in terms of your offensive line, was it was it tough to protect Perry today? And, and with that core being so young, do you think they'll look back on today as, as something they can grow from, they can learn from us? Yeah, they, they, they need to. We need to. Got to get better up front. Absolutely. Um, we knew going to the game that BC has a very good defensive front, and they do. They they play well. They they've done that. You know, you watch their games throughout the whole year. They they've done that to a lot of teams. But it is what it is. We we, we got to we got to man up and play up there. And, and at times we did that. And at times we didn't. And that that certainly, you know, hurt us. Can you talk about Ty's big playability? You know, especially going forward. <coughs> he's done it all year. He's he's I mean he's consistently been a big play guy for us all year. He does have that ability, and he's a young guy and still learning and getting better. And we're certainly excited about about him and you know a lot of guys in that position moving forward. But you know, you, you saw it again with Ty; he had, he had several in this game, and he, he's done that. I don't I don't know what he'll finish the, the year at yards per carry, but it, it's it's I mean it's got if it's not a record, it's got to be up there. Coach, at one point you went for it on fourth down and won. It wound up being a pitch to Kenneth Goins. Was that the plan all along, or had that been a clean snap? Were you going to go to Perry Hills right at the middle? It was going to be a pitch to Kenny all along. And if we pitched to Kenny, you know, I mean, you could look at the tape, but there was, there was, you know, I was the closest man to him on the field. But we fumbled the snap, and so you saw what happened. My heart is uh, <clears throat> Coach, can you compare Landry to the best defensive players you've seen uh, this year? He, he's a very good football player, Re- really good football player. Talented guy, has a future in the NFL. Um, can't say enough good things about him. Go into this game without Shane, who's been your leading tackler, has had a few big games. How difficult is that to do? And also, I don't know if you can talk about you know Shane's situation. Yeah, you know the great part is I, Isaiah Davis went there and played a great game for us. Isaiah's a young guy, has a bright future, flies around, plays fast, hits people, and I mean he went in there and played an awesome game. You know that, that that's that's what I love. That's what I want to focus on, man. Isaiah, 
Isaiah Davis has a great future with us in this program. How tough is it to play from behind? I mean, you guys fought back, which I'm sure you're happy about that, but just the energy you have to use, and you're always kind of looking at the scoreboard. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, our, our guys, it wasn't a matter of like we sputtered out and ran out of energy. We didn't. We, we, we were there. We're in it. Just we didn't execute in the end. We didn't, we, you know, we, if you have the ball with two minutes to go in a football game and a chance to score to go ahead, that's all you can ask for. You, you would take that in any game. You know, and that, that in, in competitive football, that happens quite a bit. You know, in, in the two-minute drill, they, they execute, out-executed us. Coach, what message did you have for the squad at halftime? It seems like the squad came out and played very well in the third quarter. Came back. It wasn't a real big rah-rah message. It was kind of like, you know, like we made adjustments. We changed some things on defense. We changed some things on offense. And, and it, the, the good part is they, they focused in. It was a two-score game. I mean, and and, and at, to that point, we were killing. I mean, the field position, we just killed ourselves on on, on, on special teams plays. And, I mean, it, it was the story of the game. We were, we were backed up the whole first half. You said if we stop doing that, we're going to be right in it. And we were. The, the good part is they, they took the message. They listened. It, it was it was more about executing. I was talking to them in this tone. Like, let's let's go fix it. And they had the confidence to go do that. That was the good part. We just we came up short. You, you got through this game, and when you're able to you know, go back and, and look at it, Will you look at this season overall as positive, though? Yeah, I mean, there, there, there's there's plenty of positives to point at, but you know, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we we go in every game trying to win every game, you know. So I don't know. It's whatever. We're six and seven now, so that's, that's certainly not what we're, we're shooting for. Um, you know, there's a lot of positives. There's a lot of guys that, that got better this year and played a lot of football for us that were probably maybe not ready yet to play, but but we had to play them. So the good part moving forward is they they, they had that experience under their belt. Um, there's certainly a lot, a lot to grow from, and, and um, I, you know, as we move forward with our guys, understand our system and how we do things. So yeah, there's plenty of positives, but the, you know, the end result is not what we want. Thank you, Coach. Thanks. Well, it was great to uh, celebrate with the guys in the locker room, and uh, a lot of fun. As I said in that locker room, we're really going to miss this group of seniors. It was our first group of seniors when we got here, and uh, special group of guys, tremendous guys, and uh, they did so much for our program. This game was a, uh, an exciting game. Um, I thought uh, <coughs> I thought Maryland really played uh, exceptionally hard. Uh, they had a lot of fight, and obviously were playing hard like our guys were playing hard. I think their program, their staff, is off to great things. I know they are. You can tell when a team battles like and, and, and plays through everything like they did that a great things are going to happen for them. Um, for us, uh, I thought we came out of the blocks really fast on offense. You know, we, we went up tempo, uh, and uh, I thought we had a nice mix of stuff going on. I liked I liked where we were in the first half a lot. I thought on defense as well. I think uh, in the second half, in the third quarter, uh, both sides of the ball, we, we had a couple issues, let up a couple scores. We kind of, you know, we missed a field goal. We didn't go for a field goal at one point because it was a little out of our range, and uh, so we list, missed two good scoring opportunities. And they had two scores in there, and that swung that game at that point, which I thought we had a great opportunity to really pull away then. Uh, but what we did was we found a way to battle back in the end and win. And, and really it's most important to me because we started the year in Ireland, and uh, we didn't know how to find a way to win yet. And we closed the year in Detroit, and along the way here the last – month or so of the season we started to really develop a resolve that you could see in the players eyes that they aren't going to let each other down and the most critical thing in, in building your program is having that and uh, I really believe that we finally have uh, set that platform forward and uh, that's the most exciting thing to me of all so with that we're proud to represent the uh, quick lane bowl the Detroit Lions and uh, you know honored to get that trophy and uh, you know, it was our third bowl appearance in four years and first bowl victory at BC in nine years and I think really set the stage for a good finale at the season and where we're going to head as we move forward. Anybody have any questions? So, uh, first half, you hadn't had a half like that in terms of scoring in, in, in two years. Yeah. And then going back further, I mean, mm-hmm. who, who stood out for you in that first half? And then obviously you guys had a chance to get back into the game and kind of get that rhythm yeah, I mean, we had a lot of <clears> – <throat> we worked hard in our off, in, in our bowl prep. It was like a spring ball for us. We had 16 or 17 opportunities, whatever we had. And um, we went to a no-huddle system. Um, not necessarily – it wasn't necessarily always going as fast as you could, although we had times in there where we did that as well. 
We had check with me's at the line. We had regular tempo, no huddle. We had fast tempo. And we played the game in one, you know, kind of really most of the game in one grouping where we can give you one back, two back looks and empty. And we're just scratching it right now. But this is where we want to be. And, and so we took the leap of faith and said, let's get this done, and, done in, in, after the season and let's move it forward. Let's not wait for spring ball. So we did it. And uh, we feel our strength is, and offense is going to be in the multiplicity of our tight ends and their, and their, and their skill sets. And uh, I thought John Hillman ran well today. I thought uh, there's just a good mixture with the receivers and Pat threw the ball well. And I just thought that uh, I like what I saw and I like where that will lead for us. It will give us an opportunity to put more pressure on defenses, give us an opportunity to get more plays run. Why do you think Hillman had more success today than he's sort of had in uh... He worked really hard in the bowl prep to really uh, took a lot of reps to get in a groove. You know, uh, had a great bowl prep practice winter, really did. And uh, just really uh, had a resolve about him, you know. And uh, and I thought that that showed. And, um, you know, all of our guys, I mean, what we did was new and different. And uh, But it's where I had envisioned this. And uh, But when you're so, uh, we have so many inexperienced guys that my feeling sometimes is, I want to build fundamentals. I want to build those fundamentals and get a base before you try to get out ahead of your skis or it just gets really sloppy. And I, I finally thought that we had built enough where we could go ahead now and try to get this done. Because what happens is when you're not, when you, when you don't have a lot of experience and you get tired, your fundamentals fall apart. And I didn't want that to happen. But I felt like finally at the end of the season, let's make a move this way now. And I like what I saw and feel great about what we'll do. And we'll, we'll get that better and better and better. Can you reflect on uh, the plays Landry made, particularly? Uh two deflections right in a row, a sack at the end. And moving forward, how do you advise him on the stay or go? Well, I think, you know, uh, like everybody, you know, we gather all the information and then we, we sit down. We've sat down once and we'll sit down again. And uh, my thing is you do what's best for the players. Uh, if it's best for a player then to leave, then you advise them that and, and you move on. And, you know, um, and, and, but you got to get all the information. And if it's not, you advise that. But at the end of the day, it's a player's decision to do what's best for them. My most important thing to me is I want to make sure that our guys, all of our guys, always get their degree because that's at BC. That's a really, really important thing. Um, so we'll sit down here sometime in the very near future again and uh, I'm sure come to some decision on what's in the best interest uh, for Harold and for his future. And how about tonight, his, his game today? I thought he played great. I thought our whole defensive front played great. You know, I saw so many guys making so many plays out there. You know, it was really uh, impressive. Um, and they gave the MVP to the defensive line. I really thought that was very appropriate. I mean, <coughs> at the end, they were relentless at the end. That fourth quarter was a relentless quarter. And like I said, in that third quarter, we got a little sideways. But in that fourth quarter, boy, we were relentless. It was really uh, an impressive deal. I know a lot of guys in there, guys that, you know, some who have played a lot of ball, some who haven't. And they're exciting in their future. You know, saw Ray Smith in there making plays, and Zach Allen, and Wyatt Ray, and just a lot of guys besides the, the normal guys you see, which you know, Truman and Cav and and Harold. But uh, it's a good group of guys right there. I think Coach Pascaloni has done as good a job as I've ever seen in terms of the development of a position group. You know, when you have an elite coach, that I mean, it's hard not to see the development of that defensive line. That's hard not to to notice. What can fundamentals do? Well, you just saw it. The development of those players. Cody, you said in the third quarter it got a little bit sideways defensively. Both, both, both sides of the ball. I thought. I thought, you know, we, we kind of, you know, what happened was is they started really heat. They were heating us up most of the game on offense, but they started bringing a lot of pressure. And really, you know, we wanted to go to the quick game a little bit. We did, but probably not early enough and not enough. You know, spread the field, get in the quick game because we feel good about that, and then get away from some of those pressures. You know, but uh, um, and on defense, they hit us with a couple of plays. You know, and we got hit on a couple of, you know, they checked us in a couple of short boxes and, and caught us. And, uh, and, you know, give credit to them. I thought they looked dynamic and fast. And uh, they made some big plays. And uh, that popped them back in the game. You know, they were boom, boom, just like that. And then on offense, we were kind of like fishtailing right there a little bit, you know. Um, and then, you know, I still think we had a great opportunity there. We drove down the field a couple of times. And we had stalled in the red zone uh, while just outside on one on the 30 and I made a decision to go for it on fourth down because I thought we were just out of our range and then on the next one we had the ball in the 20 and I made a decision on fourth and four whatever it was to kick it because we were in our range but we didn't convert those were two missed scoring opportunities and really in my opinion we had opportunities to score touchdowns and those that could have probably pulled us away you know? but it didn't we had to battle it 
I mean, you know, for, for the seniors, it's been nine years since uh, BC won a bowl game, you know, so we wanted to change the culture. We wanted to, you know, we got to two, you know, with the Shreveport, we went to the pinstripe in New York, but uh, we wanted to win one. So, um, you know, I think our preparation, uh, we prepared really hard, you know, because Jazzy had a great schedule for us, and uh, it worked well for our team, so. What was your reaction to the defensive line sharing the MVP award? I mean, you know, Coach Pasquale is an incredible coach. He's, put, he's taking us from one level to another, um, so... We play with a lot of confidence. You know, Harold on the edge is unbelievable. And, you know, we take a lot of pride on the inside trying to stop the run. You know, so um, I think we did our job pretty well. With Bills being, like, sort of sack prone, did you guys know you had an opportunity to kind of change it? Well, I think one of, their, their, one of their better O linemen wasn't playing uh, 76. So, um, you know, coming out, we knew he wasn't playing. So, uh, I mean, we just played the same way we played every team hard, as hard as we can. So. Can we just talk about stopping them inside the five twice? Yeah. I mean, that was, that, I'm, I'm going to remember that, that goal line stand forever, you know. Uh, it was unbelievable, and, you know, we just looked each other in the eye, and we knew we had it. So, that's what we've been preparing for all winter, you know, working working hard. So, can you go through just that entire sequence? Because it looks, it, it, it's tight. It's entirely too tight. All of a sudden, the ball comes loose. Yeah. Things are, things are happening. And yeah. Can't it was chaos. I mean, uh, I think we had him stop. You know, we had a sack and we had a face mask. I gave him a automatic first down. And uh, When you see the flags come out of a face mask, are you kind of like, uh, you know, that's tough because it's on my first down. It was third down, and they were—I mean—they were getting pushed out of field goal, field goal range. Uh, so, 15 yards on my first down was a killer. But, you know, we we prepared for that. You know, we've been in tough situations this year. You know, on the goal line, you know, Wake Forest—we had a couple. We had a you know fourth down stop with a fumble recovery. So, we've been there before. We were prepared. So, we just did what we do. Did what we do. You know. Were you thinking six on that fumble return? Oh, <laughs> you know that was that was my heart was racing and. Uh, I should have hurled the guy, but uh, I can't. <laughs> I hurled the guy, but I can't jump very high. So uh, he got me. Yeah. Thanks, Trent. All right, thank you. Open up questions for Kevin. Kevin, with such a uh, big uh, attendance from family and friends from your home, uh, what, would, what does it mean to you to get the fumble uh, at the touchdown? Today? It was amazing. Uh, my family's been so supportive the last four years. They 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 come to a lot of games, and to see, like, I think I had close to 100 people wearing those 93 shirts. So I just had to leave it all on the field today. It was incredible, all the support I had. As my Aunt Mar would say, it was very spiritual. <laughs> what did you see when you saw Noah blow up that play? I mean, just... I mean he's, he's got unbelievable get-off. We've known it for years, since he came in. He can really get off the ball. His first three yards, he's faster than anyone. And so they were pulling today, and he was able to get in there and make some big plays for us. It was awesome. Awesome to see him finally get paid for all his hard work. And did you just see the ball? And yeah, I saw it down in there, and it was, I had to get it. You know, Some people want it, some people got to have it, and I, I had to have it. Uh, the offense obviously took advantage of some of the short fields you gave it, but you know I think the game still kind of came down to to you guys sort of firming up at the end. I mean, yeah, they they did never stop playing. They, were, they they competed to the very end. It's a good team. Uh, at the end of the day, the defense we always say the defense is the tip of the spear, and we want the games on our back. And it was, it was great to go out there and end it uh, four quick plays. Did, was Harold any different this week than, than any other week? I feel like he might have had sort of a, a different mentality going in? Uh, you know, he, he plays so hard every single game. Uh, it's so much fun playing with him. He's so explosive off the edge. I think I'm going to get a sack, and then he beats me to it every single time. So it's, I don't think there's anything different. He just he goes full, all out every single game. And it was awesome. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, next up will be Patrick. <coughs> uh, and open up for questions. How long is that um, reverse pass to you? Gonna <laughs> well, I think we've practiced it, I think, since... I'll say like week three, and um, we ran it uh, once against Clemson, once against NC State. Um, but um, you know, it actually worked out. We, you know, when the we get so much ball prep in the three weeks that we got to really prepare. We started doing a lot of no huddle stuff, and um, you know, through Coach Leffler, we were able to see you know that we got the right look for that for that play. Um, and I was just glad that I caught it and didn't get ran down. <laughs> How big of a difference is it to be seven and six and six and seven coach touched on it, but as a player to finish with a winning record? Oh, I mean, it's huge. I mean, it's huge. You know, it's my first bowl game, my first bowl win. Um, you know, our, you know, as a team, you know, our first bowl victory here, and I think in nine seasons. So, um, you know, this is this is something that that you can really, really build upon. You know, going to bowl games are great. Um, I will never take that for granted. Um, but winning a bowl game is 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 a different level. I um, mean. Getting that victory today will only <clears throat> propel these guys forward in the offseason. <clears throat> Outside of the game in the bowl win, what was your favorite memory of your time spent with the squad in Detroit? Oh, I'd say um, the first night we were here, we did that falling thing, which, you know, when I first kind of heard about it, I was a little kind of skeptical. I was like, hey, look, you know, throwing a football pin, how fun can that be? But um, when we had the end there, 
uh, Len is my roommate, um, and he, we were, I mean, long snapped. It was like, you know, he, it was Manchester United versus Man City, and he had a, you know, a goal in the 96th minute. I mean, it was unbelievable seeing the reaction from our team, and, and that's what, you know, that's the stuff you remember. I mean, you know, the, the wins and losses are great. I mean, you know, the trophy's wonderful, um, but you remember your teammates, and you remember the relationships that you built, you built and um, I know that, you know, I have, I'll have four best friends for the rest of my life. How about your impressions of Ford Field and playing here? I love it. Hopefully, hopefully I can be back here sometime soon. Um, <laughs> but it was great. It was great. You know, the Lions did, did a wonderful job. Quick Lane did a wonderful job. You know, we really, really felt, you know, like superstars here. Um, whether it was the hotel or the events, the, you know, everything was, was A1. And, um, you know, not having anything to compare it to, um, I don't know how, um, how genuine my, uh, my um, kind of description can be, but this, is a, this was a wonderful place, um, and my family got to come, and since I live so close and spent Christmas with my family, you know, Detroit is a, it was wonderful to us. I mean, we will remember that forever.